Something I touch falls flat. Simon the Eggman mumbled as his wagon rolled into the dusty town. He could hear kids snickering. Where did he get that hat? <laughs> Simon pulled his hat so far down you couldn't see his eyebrows. You couldn't see if he was smiling, but you knew he wasn't. No one knew that not long ago, Simon had been a baker in Springfield town and was almost famous. He didn't wear the hat then. His hair was red and blazing, and his eyebrows bushy as foxtails. Saturday nights, the whole family stood outside Simon's bake shop, watching him and his two baker friends Play basketball with the dough, and his bread rose higher than anyone's. So people came from miles around to get it. His favorite customer was a little girl named Sally, whose dress had hundreds of bright patches because her family was so poor. Every day, Simon gave Sally two loaves of bread for a penny. And Sally would say, that's not what they cost. And Simon would say with a wink, sure it is. <laughs> but when Simon's two baker friends stole all his money and ran away, he sold the shop because the joy went out of baking. After that, everything he touched fell flat. So he bought a farm a hundred miles away and started selling eggs in a little town where nothing ever happened. One day, after selling eggs in town, Simon was clattering home when suddenly he saw a thousand butterflies bursting out of the woods. It was a young woman in a dress of hundreds of bright patches. Simon, I'm Sally. Remember? You used to give me two loaves for a penny. That's what they cost, Simon said. No, they didn't, she said with a wink. You helped me and my family for years. Now I have something for you. She gave him a pouch. These are dried raspberries. Plant them today and just wait till you taste them. She waved her hand and was gone. <whistles> that afternoon, black clouds raced overhead and the wind screamed. <whistles> Simon shooed the chickens into the barn and ran for his house. When he remembered the pouch, he shook out the dried raspberries, and the wind blew them all over his land. <whistles> well, if they don't grow, at least I got a pouch, Simon said. Then lightning cracked the sky and struck the barn, which leapt into flames, and all the chickens were lost. No more eggs. No way to make a living, Simon said and jammed his hat down further on his head. In the morning, Simon opened the door and stared and stared. Everywhere he looked, he saw bushes covered with raspberries. It was a rolling red sea with crests and waves of raspberries. He pushed his hat up just a bit and tasted one. Mm. It was so sweet, he sprang in the air and sang out raspberries. He tasted another and found himself in the air again yelling raspberries so loud the bees stopped buzzing and the frogs watched bug eye. He picked more and more raspberries, singing, I'm 
gonna make a few pennies today, today I'm gonna make a few pennies today, hooray! Simon headed into town with the raspberries in the wagon. The grocer, persnickety Mr. Perkins, looked at the raspberries and snapped, You're my egg man, not my fruit man. Lucy Woolley, the town bully and the mayor's wife said, I wouldn't even buy eggs from you. The barber said, See these scissors, Simon? I cut hair. I don't buy fruit. Everyone said no to Simon's raspberries. As Simon was leaving town that night with the raspberries still in the wagon. Baker Willens came out of his bake shop barking like a sea lion. What he got there, Simon? Special raspberry. Special! Boom. I'll try one box. Come on in and watch a baker work. The old baker patted out the dough, pulled on the berries, sealed up the tarts, and put them in the oven. Simon pushed his hat up just a little bit to watch. Help me knead my dough while the tarts are baking, the baker said. Simon's hands dough down in the dough. He kneaded with such rhythm. Baker Willem stared amazed. After a while, the old baker said, My nose says those tarts are done. They don't smell special to me, but I'll try one. He bit into a tart, and a great wind blew the baker, and he rose to his toes, shouting, Raspberry! <laughs> Astonished, Baker Willem wrote, Bring them all in! You're going to help me bake all night! Simon himself snitched a tart, jumped into the air, singing raspberries. The freckles almost flew off his face. They baked bread and pies and 84 tarts, and in the morning, Baker Willem said, that was the best baking night of my life. <laughs> oh, but I'm tired of it. I'm going to sleep, so you do the selling, Simon. At 8 o'clock sharp, Mrs. Sharp marched in. Her chin was sharp, her nose was sharp, and her umbrella was sharp. What are those odd things? She snapped. Raspberry tart, Simon said. Grandmother never had bumps in her tarts. She said, I'll try one nevertheless. Mrs. Sharp took a bite. Her head shot up, and she cried, <laughs> A few minutes later, Mrs. Sharp's friend Jenny Longlegs came in. Jenny took a bite of the tart, and her hat flew into the air as she sang, Red Bitties! Simon, they both said, how many tarts have you got? Eighty-four, Simon said. Mrs. Sharp said, we'll take forty each. That leaves almost none for Lucy Woolley. <laughs> She'll be sorry she didn't invite us to her tea. At noon, Baker Willems beamed. You sold almost every tart. Simon, you're not as shy as you look. Just then, the door flew open, and the mayor's wife, Lucy Woolley, the town bully, stormed in. Today is my annual tea, and I hear you have a wonderful tart. Did you save 80 for me? Only four, Simon said. You saved only four, she shouted. Wrap them all, Baker Williams. It's the last time I'll be in your shop. She laughed. Baker Willem sang. Simon pulled his hat lower. Everything I touch falls flat. That afternoon, the great tea was held on Lucy Woolley's lawn a mile out of town. Lucy Woolley looked like a mound of floating vanilla ice cream. Old Mrs. Oddbones bent as a hairpin, shuffled to the goody table. The tarts had been cut in pieces. Mmm, tarts. She took a bite and flew into the air singing, Raspberries! All the ladies rushed to get a piece till it looked more like a square dance than a tea. Where did those tarts come from? Someone shouted. Baker Willems, of course, old Mrs. Oddbones cried as she ran and jumped over the hedge, leapt into her carriage and shouted, Giddy up! All the ladies followed and Lucy Woolley was left alone in the dust. In town, people thought they heard growing thunder. 
Then, out of the billowing dust, roared old Mrs. Oddbones. Hiya! Quick, Baker Williams, a dozen raspberry tarts! Old Mrs. Oddbones demanded. Now all the ladies were clamoring. I'll take a dozen. I want two. It was bedlam. I got no tarts! Baker Williams boomed. Have them at eight tomorrow morning, old Mrs. Oddbones said. It's big day, the birthday of the town. If you don't, we won't trade here any more. And they all laughed. Baker Williams slumped. Son, I can't make all those tarts by morning. It's the end of my business. No, Simon said, pushing his hat up. It'll all be done. And by morning, Simon rushed back home, picked till his wagon was heaped with raspberries, and carted them back to Baker Willems' shop. All night, he patted out the dough, pulled on the berries, sealed up the tarts, and baked and baked until there were tarts all over the place. At four in the morning, Simon went out to stretch and could have sworn he heard a star call softly to him. Ah, At eight the next morning, the band marched and played bum, 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 as the ladies, led by old Mrs. Oddbone, stormed the bake shop. Simon was selling tarts so fast his hands were flying. Then the ladies roared into the street, handing out tarts, flinging tarts, pitching them to people who hadn't caught anything in years, to grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, aunts, fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, and little babies, too. The whole town began to leap into the air around the band, shouting, Raspberries! It looked like a street full of grasshoppers. The band kept playing, and people kept dancing, jumping, leaping, hopping, twirling, somersaulting, and eating more tarts. Old Mrs. Oddbones grabbed the grocer for snickety Mr. Perkins and said, Dance with me, you old funny. She spun him around, and Mrs. Sharp spun him right back. Finally, the mayor asked for quiet. Usually on big day, he said, the band plays, I say a few words, and we all go home alone to our houses. But today we're all bursting. It feels like a real birthday. We're town again, and it's all because of Baker Willems and his tarts. Baker Willems were just going into the bake shop. He said, I didn't bake last night, Mayor. Simon did. Underneath that hat, he's a fine man. Baker Willems pushed Simon out the door, and the band struck up. <laughs> Old Mrs. Oddbones took Simon's elbow and jitted up and down as a three-year-old girl danced around him. Just then, Lucy Woolley, the town bully, bit into a tart and bounced so high, Simon burst out laughing. Everyone watched as Baker Willems reached for Simon's ugly old hat and tore it off. Simon's brilliant red hair shot up like firecrackers and his eyebrows sparked. Hooray! Hooray! As they cheered, Simon thought he saw a thousand butterflies far down the street. And he realized it was Sally, waving. She knew all was well because his hat was gone. And Simon's hair was red as raspberries. When all quieted down, Baker Willems said, This redhead here! It's going to join my bake shop. And he did. Now, when Simon comes to town, the children rush to greet him, shouting, Red!
best. And sometimes the grown-ups do too. The end. Please subscribe.